Uh, so I, I think maybe we'll retitle this a beginner's guide to cop part one, you know, since I, I don't know how much we're going to get to, uh, in, uh, you know, 50 minutes or, you know, or whatever this, uh, this ends up being. It's pro, it's ever- pro, prolegomena to beginner's guide to. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever hear what happened in uh, Russia in 2013, Ben? Oh, I think I, I think I do remember this, but yes, please. Oh, I think, yeah. I think. Okay, I think so uh, there are two <laughs> Russian guys are at a bar apparently, and they got into a fight about Kant's ethics, uh, and it got a little bit heated, and one of them shot the other. Right? <laughs> so, this is just how competitive the camp marketplace is, right? Yeah, you yeah, got to yeah. get in there and stake out your claim pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I assume the guy who shot the other guy was not the Kantian, because that that surely violates the categorical <laughs> imperative. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there were a lot of lame jokes made about that afterwards, yeah, right? Yeah, it's like, yeah. well, you know. He might have won the argument, but you know, I don't really think he got the spirit of what Kant was talking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like the uh, the thing about the the story about um, uh, you know Wittgenstein and Popper. The was yeah, it the poker? poker, 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 poker right? yeah. Wittgenstein is waving around the fireplace poker, ranting him, you know, and he's asking, you know, what they you know to uh, uh, to demanding that Popper tell him a philosophical problem that can't be reduced to a confusion about language, and he says uh, whether it's ethically right to threaten the <laughs> lectures with fireplace pokers. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, let's uh, so so let's get into this. I think um, you know since. We're not going to worry too much about how we cover, you know. It will be yes, the uh, the prolegomena to a future uh, beginner's guide to Kant. Uh, so, uh, so I, I think I think maybe one way to uh, to set this up, you know, for for people who you know looking for a little bit of a wider you know perspective, um, is to uh, to think about what was going on. At the uh, you know at the time and in the you know couple you know centuries leading up to uh, to Kant that you know that he was he was reacting to and uh, and interacting with, so certainly one way and you know I'm sure you could nitpick this but like a sort of standard uh, you know introductory kind of textbook kind of way of setting this up is to uh, is to say that there are these two big uh, philosophical trends. Uh, uh, you know, rationalism and empiricism. You know, in the uh, in the time, uh, you know, leading up to, uh, to to Kant, and that he's sort of putting these together, or you know, reacting to these in an interesting way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, somebody want to just uh, maybe maybe Ryan, you know, want just 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 start us up by by talking about what those two what those two things are. Uh, rationalism and empiricism. Yeah. So empiricism is the view that all knowledge comes through the senses that, uh, so the sort of uh, locking idea that we're born as blank slates, that we come to the world knowing nothing uh, and that all of our concepts, all of our beliefs, everything we understand about the world uh, is added through what we experience over the course of our lives. Um, And then rationalism is the idea that uh, at least for, in some ways it's possible to have knowledge uh, without experience, that you can get to knowledge just by pure reason or just by conceptualizing. Yeah. So, like, if if people, you know, like, I don't know, you know, if they know just a little bit about philosophy, maybe they took an intro class or something, they'll, they'll, yeah. they'll probably, like, probably remember, uh, you know, Descartes, uh, who, uh, who who's like a... Uh, very clear example of, of a rationalist who says that there are certain things that you could know uh, not based on you know on any input you know from uh, from, yeah. from the world around you, uh, but just based on what uh, you know he'll sometimes call like, pure like reason or things like that, right? You know, so yeah. that you could know like he could know that his own you know his own mind exists you know just, yeah. just from this this faculty of reason that's different from uh, the uh, that's different from this uh, faculties of you know that's different from the ordinary sensory faculties and it's. And crucially, uh, that's not just about uh, sort of logic chopping, like the definitions of words, or something. Right, right. Yes, yeah, not ju- yes, yeah, not just that kind of thing. But yeah, especially for Descartes, reason has to come first. We can't trust our senses, so we have to start with reason to build a foundation, and only then can we then go back to our experiences and apply our reason to figure out which of our experiences we should trust and which we shouldn't. Yeah, and. Uh, and, and I guess with without like dwelling too long on this distinction, like one thing that's that's worth uh, you know pointing out is there's a little bit of ambiguity here uh, because these these claims uh, can be read as sort of um, factual claims or normative ones. So mm-hmm. uh, you know they could, so the factual way of reading them is it's a dispute about whether 
there are things that are um so like the lock says there's nothing in the understanding that's not first of the senses mm -hmm. that's, that's a that's a pretty straightforward factual claim uh and it's it's also the part of empiricism that you know i think is is most uh questionable given mm -hmm. given what we now know uh about you know cognitive science and you know and all that mm -hmm. stuff uh but it's not you know it's related but it's not so that that's the factual claim that like the empiricist factual claim would be that the only way that you know that any piece of information you know comes into our minds mm -hmm. is from our senses and the normative claim is that uh the only way that we can be justified in believing mm -hmm. anything is uh is through through our senses or mm -hmm. um and and then i guess uh the other the other sort of thing to say about that is that there is a there is a, a category of things that even empiricists think that we can um, that we that we can have without uh, you know without getting it from the senses, but it's it's a very narrow category. Mm -hmm. So, um, which which is uh, analytic uh, analytic truths, which are which are things that are are true just um, you know just by sort of logic and definitions. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, do, I do always like Hume's description of analytical truth. It's basically not really very interesting, not very useful, uh, and purely of interest to the speculative. Mm -hmm. right? um, mm -hmm. I, his kind of candidness on that always struck me as pretty rare uh, amongst philosophers. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because I mean, because because you're you're shitting on the thing that we're actually good at. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's kind of shitting on Socrates there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. like when, when Socrates is going around Athens asking people to you know define justice or goodness mm. or whatever you know that they had <laughs> definitions. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what he's trying to do is find analytic truths, things that are just you know they're just true you know about definite you know, I mean. Roughly, right? You know, yeah. but they have a, you know, but that, like, but, but the, the thing that's being explored there is the realm of logic and definitions, which mm -hmm. is where analytic truths, you know, come, uh, come up. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but, uh, and I, and I know, like, sometimes it's confusing when people first hear this. Like, okay, I thought the empiricists said we can't know anything except for the senses. Now you're saying there's some things that we can, but the distinction is just that you that whether you can know, like, like Descartes thought that you could know the, that God existed. Yeah. For a reason. Yeah. Pretty uh, big one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and that's a very different kind of claim than that you can know through pure reason that all bachelors are unmarried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I also just would just add to like Ben to your point about for empiricists that there are there are certain things. It's very narrow, but this causes a lot of problems when people try to. Um, uh, sort of rectify or to think about uh, Locke's uh, empiricism or um, Locke's epistemology, like his more philosophical writings, and then try to square that with his political writings where in the second treaties where like reason is the law is the law of nature. And so you get questions sometimes, well, if he's an empiricist, how is, how is, re it's not that empiricism um, discounts reason mm -hmm. um, or that there are certain things that, um, that we that we um, that fall outside of um, uh, the empirical senses. Mm -hmm. um, that just made me th made me think of it because a lot of people can get hung up on that. Wait a minute! No, I mean, that's, that's a, he's an I, empiricist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good question. Actually, I, I don't I don't know enough about uh, about Locke to have, have a good to have a good handle on the possible answers to that. But uh, but I, and then like I think that sort of generalizes even like that uh, for for empiricists who are who are um, who are making moral claims, right? You know, like 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 what 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 kind of claims do they take themselves to be making here, right? Like that it doesn't seem like uh, you know, like if like a lock-in claim about property rights or something like that, that, that certainly doesn't seem to be an analytic truth, but it's also not obvious how you're supposed to derive it from like sensory interaction with, you know, with, with right. external stimulus. Yeah. I guess maybe if you're some kind of intuitionist, like you can apprehend moral truths and of, of some sort, but yeah, otherwise it's hard to know how you do that as an empiricist. This has been a free public preview of a patron exclusive episode of Give Them an Argument. To get the rest of this episode and every other patron exclusive episode, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess.